Hey friends, my name is Gloria and welcome back to another video. It's been a little while since I've filmed and been in front of the camera, even though you've seen some videos from me recently. Those were filmed a bit ago. So I feel like I'm a little out of practice. But since the last time I filmed, I have reached over a thousand subscribers now and I'm so thankful. Thank you so much for all of you watching, commenting, subscribing, caring at all about what I have to say about books and random things. So I so appreciate it. I will be doing a 1K Q&A in traditional booktube fashion. I did post a community post a while ago and something on my Instagram, but if you didn't see either of those and you do have a question for me, please leave a question down below in the comments of this video and I will be answering those in an upcoming Q&A video. It could be anything bookish related or anything about my life. I don't really shy away from answering personal life questions, so feel free to ask whatever you're curious about. But in today's video, we're gonna talk about some some spicy things all the books that I did not like and did not enjoy in 2021. I made my best of videos, my best of nonfiction, my best of fiction. You can watch those for all the happy thoughts, but I'm gonna get a little controversial. I, I tend to be quite harsh with some ratings and a lot of popular books I did not enjoy in 2021. And the big disclaimer, these opinions are my own. It's totally okay if you absolutely loved a book or liked a book that I did not like. You know, reading is subjective and not every book is for every person. 2021 was the first year that I ever did not finish a book or DNF'd as people say here on booktube and so I have nine books that I DNF'd that I will mention briefly. I'll try not to linger because this will be a very long video and then I have 23 books that I either gave one or two stars. One star books definitely means hated it, did not enjoy my experience at all. Two star books can be either I thought it was fine, thought it was okay, nothing special, or it could mean I just didn't like it, but I don't have like a hatred for it to give it a one star. So there's some variation in my one and two star reads. And these aren't gonna be ranked from like most hated to least hated. I just broke them down into genre categories. But without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna start with my DNFs. Like I said, this was my first year that I did not finish a book. I am very much the kind of reader that when I start, I need to finish it, but I just, gave myself the freedom to stop and it all started with this nonfiction, the immune system recovery plan i started this book before booktube with my husband we were reading it out loud it's all about treating your autoimmune disease with eating certain things or like following some sort of program we got what we needed out of this book and we really did not need to continue it and so we stopped reading it and just that simple action of removing it from my currently reading bookshelf on goodreads and marking it as abandoned gave me the freedom to then continue dnfing books the next two books I DNF'd were in my Enneagram video, reading like my Enneagram type. The first one was Uncommon Type by Tom Hanks. Big fan of Tom Hanks. I was so excited when I learned that he wrote a fiction short story collection. I'm not a short story kind of girl. So I feel like I kind of was hesitant going in and I really could not connect with these stories. I did not like what they were about. It was weird. It was just strange and I did not want to continue reading it. So I stopped. He did narrate his own audiobook and that was great. He's a fantastic actor and narrator, but no, the content, at least short stories just were not working for me. In that same video, I DNF'd My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. This is a popular thriller. And I think something that I learned about myself with DNFing this book and since kind of starting this booktube journey, trying to figure out what my reading tastes are, I would say I'm someone that enjoys mystery thrillers to a certain point. And one thing that I don't like in them is really morally gray characters, psychopathic serial killers when the serial killer is the main character. And that's what this book is about. It's about a serial killer couple. It just was too dark and weird and just felt very uncomfortable reading. So I think I realized that about myself. I should have known that going in, but I think DNFing this book solidified that for me, that I don't really like to pick up those kinds of dark thrillers. And speaking of, that is the same reason why I DNF'd this next book, and that is Night Film by Marisha Pessel. This is a very popular booktube book, and again, I should have read the synopsis and like known what I was getting into, but I didn't, and I started reading it, and very similar, gruesome, dark energy vibes. I just knew that it was a multimedia, very popular like thriller, but I think it's more a horror book. Again, just really morally gray, uncomfortable characters, and I just didn't want to power through it when I knew I wasn't going to like it. A controversial one coming up and that is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This is probably a lot of people's top favorite book of the year. I had the same expectation going in when I was reading it because I loved Martian and that was one of my favorite books of the year and I thought of course I'm gonna like Project Hail Mary but I didn't and I have a whole vlog of me coming to that realization and I was told that I did spoil the book which I don't think I did but I'm not gonna spoil it in this video. However there's this main thing that this book is about and I feel like 
it's not a spoiler because it's revealed pretty early on and it's something that I do not enjoy reading about or care about in sci-fi books. It's a very common trope or theme in sci-fi books set in space but i don't care to read about that and so i feel like if i knew that going in if someone told me like hey this book is about this thing i would have been like cool yeah i don't need to read that because i don't like to read about that but yeah i think i might be the only person who does not like this book moving on though a couple other dnfs one was red clocks by lenny zumas this i picked up because it is set in oregon and i like books that are set in the state that i live in and it's also an author that is from portland and right off the get-go it was extremely sexually explicit and i couldn't really handle it not my kind of book so i quit that one pretty quickly a historical fiction i dnf'd was dawn by ellie wazell i reread night this year by the author which was his non-fiction memoir that he wrote about his holocaust experience and that was incredible five stars but the bound up that i had from the library included night which is his non-fiction and then two historical fictions that he wrote and it was all in one book so i thought well i'll read dawn and day as well is his other one however this historical fiction was about like a jewish terrorist in israel in the aftermath of world war ii kind of dealing with the trauma of being in a concentration camp and then wanting to commit like atrocious acts on people it was just a strange read and a weird book i was just not in the space to read that kind of book and then two non-fictions that i dnf'd the first one was word by word the secret life of Dictionaries. I was reading this one for nonfiction November and this one was very beloved by a book olive as well as Annie McNulty So I had high expectations However, I found that this one was a little bit too much like too detailed too nerdy in terms of someone who loves words and grammar Corey Stamper the author is a dictionary editor and it was just too boring and detailed for me It was pages and pages about a specific word and its dictionary entry and all of the definitions And I just found myself really not caring and was was not my kind of book but i totally understand why people who really love words and language and were like english majors i totally get that this book has the audience for it that people would love it i just wasn't the right person for it and then the other nonfiction was everybody always by bob goff bob goff is a really well-known christian author and speaker he's kind of like super energetic lives life to the fullest his whole like theme and message is like go big on life and just do crazy things and i don't think he's a bad person by any means or any of that i just found that this book was quite like cheesy he just told like random life stories and then tried to connect them on a very surface level to jesus and i was like okay i don't know and so i really just couldn't connect with this one and didn't want to keep reading it so those were all the dnfs and now let's get into the one and two star reads again i divided these by genre and just will mention them and also point out a few that i had problems with i'm gonna start with historical fiction because it's my favorite genre my most read genre and these were some of the duds in that genre that just didn't work for me again my opinions i don't want to hate on anyone that loves any of these books so I will list the books here. We have Our Women in Moscow, The Secrets We Kept, The Forest of Vanishing Stars, A Woman of Intelligence, 50 Words for Rain, and The Yellow Bird Sings. All of these I gave two stars, except for A Woman of Intelligence, I gave one star. They have a common theme of why I did not like them. The main one being that the characters were very poorly developed for me. And I'm a character person, like the plot also has to be there and is important. If the main character is just falling flat for me and just written very one-dimensionally, I'm not going to care about the book. I'm not going to care about the story or even if the plot is exciting, I'm not going to care because the character sucks and I don't connect with them. And I think that's maybe a problem with some of these other books as well that I'll mention. And not all of these are equally bad. A lot of them I enjoyed some historical background, but some of them I just, I really did not like. And so I'll just mention a few. In both Our Women in Moscow and The Secrets We Kept, I learned a lot about like the Russian and American relationship during like the Cold War and like spies behind the scenes. The Secrets we kept i learned a lot about dr zhivago the russian classic that was written and so there was like some historical parts of the books and the plot that kept it interesting but again the characters could not connect with them could not root for them and so i ended up not enjoying them for the forest of vanishing stars i think i had a hard time with this book because i'm a big fan of the movie defiance with daniel craig and that book is based off of the true account of over i think a thousand jews that were surviving in the forest in poland this book is sort of set during that experience about this woman who joins this jewish camp but the foundation and start of how this character was motivated to do anything just completely did not make sense in my mind and right off the get-go i was like no this is not a real human like this is not real life and something like this would never happen i just i couldn't buy it and so therefore the whole time i could not 
care about this character. Yellow Bird Sings is super short and so I felt like I had no time with the characters at all and so when the whole book happened and like many years went by it was just sort of like okay and then what? A Woman of Intelligence, the one that I gave one star to. The main reason I didn't like it was the whole book is about this mother who's just complaining about being a mother and how her life has changed but then on the side she gets swept up into like being a spy and again I was just like no that's not real like this is so dumb and as a main character I found her so annoying because all she was doing was just complaining about her whole life and I was like you need to stop. <laughs> 50 words for rain. I really enjoyed that it was set in Japan and so I learned a little bit about like Japanese culture in that book but again to repeat myself the character was just so one-dimensional kind of fell flat for me. The character arc I found very unsatisfying and at the end of the book I was just like really okay that's it. <laughs> So those were the historical fictions. I'll quickly mention my next favorite category of books and that is nonfiction. Easily most of my nonfiction is quite highly rated. It's either four or five stars, sometimes three stars. And with the next four I'll mention, I don't think that they're necessarily not good books. They just didn't really work for me and I don't think I was the intended audience. The first one is Memorial Drive. I just read this in December and this memoir was highly praised by a book olive and I did not connect with it. It felt like it was trying to be true crime but not really succeeding and so then it just turned into like a retelling and a woman dealing with trauma. I don't think it's a bad book but the way it was put together and the flow just didn't make sense for me to consume it as I prefer my nonfiction. It just didn't work for me for some reason and I'm still trying to figure out what that reason is. The next book that I gave two stars to is Wake the Hidden History of Women-Led Slave Revolts. This is a graphic novel that I picked up in my library. I also did not really connect with the way that this book was put together because this book was more about the author doing research and the story was less about what I thought the title was saying, the women-led slave revolts, and it instead was about the author trying to research those slave revolts that were hard to research. It sort of didn't live up to what I was expecting to read about. The next one is Losing Earth, A Recent History. I read this for a Buzzwordathon prompt and I just found this to be so boring. A book about climate change, which I dabble in here and there to read about, and this one just didn't make sense to me. It also felt outdated and was more about like the politics involved in climate change and it wasn't really the kind of climate change book I'm looking for. And lastly, this one I was so devastated by and that was The Bomber Mafia by Malcolm Gladwell. I love Malcolm Gladwell. I think he's such a fantastic storyteller. His podcast Revisionist History is amazing. He's had some fantastic other books that I've really enjoyed and I was so looking forward to this one and that the audio production of this audiobook is excellent. However, the subject matter was so boring. Only read this if you care about military history and like very detailed specific military history because otherwise you'll be very bored like I was. Next up, let's talk about some mystery thrillers that I did not like. To try to keep this brief and concise, I'll just list them all and then talk about a few reasons why I didn't like certain ones. Five Total Strangers, They Never Learn, The Hunting Party, The Hawthorne Legacy, and Female of the Species. So I'll start with the two YAs. In general, I'm not the biggest YA reader fan and I'm realizing I don't like as much YA. I think I will still enjoy some young adult historical fiction here and there, but I think I will leave behind young adult contemporary and young adult mystery thrillers because they're too angsty. <laughs> and too young adult for me. Just can't handle it and realize I'm getting older and I'm like, no, I don't I don't care about what you're going through. Female of the Species didn't work for me for the same reasons that A Lovely Wife and The Night Film didn't work. It's kind of like this darker, gruesome take on a young girl who wants to be a serial killer and has serial killer tendencies, but like, she's good, but like not really. So what I learned is I should not read books with main serial killer energy. And that's the same reason why I did not like They Never Learn. The main character is also a woman serial killer who's taking revenge on evil men. I was a fan of the show Dexter, but again, I think that's like my younger self. And the more I'm realizing my book tastes and like moving forward, I don't really care about serial killers being the main character. The Hawthorne Legacy is the second book to The Inheritance Games. The Inheritance Games, I gave three stars. The Hawthorne Legacy, I found kind of boring. I did not really Really care where it went and I won't be reading the last book. The whole series just felt very young and kind of childish and silly to me and weird like incestual romance between many different characters and I feel like it was trying too hard to be like you need to solve this mystery as the reader and I'm like I don't want to solve this mystery. Don't care about all your riddles and clues. Again that's just me this is a very beloved series but I just didn't connect with it. And The Hunting Party and Five Total Strangers are both these snowy mysteries kind of closed off and The Hunting Party I just found to be also like too sexual like everyone just wants to sleep with each other and has drinking problems and you're like I don't care 
about any of you guys. And then for Five Total Strangers, it's an adult thriller, but I found it to be very YA because it's a bunch of college students and one high school student and they're all stuck in a car driving through a snowstorm trying to survive. And yeah, it just fell flat for me. Two categories left. I'm gonna end with my most unpopular opinions, but I'll quickly mention some literary slash contemporary slash I don't know where they go kind of books that I didn't really vibe with. The first one being Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. I just didn't really like this one and I read this a while ago now and I can't fully remember why I didn't like it, but I think I just felt like it was trying to be too much in one book and it was trying to say too much. The characters were also pretty like morally gray and you found yourself not really rooting for any of them and so I kind of was like, you guys are all just making really dumb life decisions. And I actually watched the show and I think I preferred the show to the book because the show kind of unpacked some of the things that were brought up in the book and like told more fully. My first Frederick Bachman was Brit Marie Was Here. It was sweet and I totally get why people would love it, but I just didn't care for it. Like my reading experience during it wasn't exciting and I just kept having the urge to want to DNF it, but I powered through anyways. Definitely wasn't a favorite. One that received a lot of booktube love that I could not connect with was Severance by Ling Ma. This is like a millennial pandemic kind of book and I really did not like it. I found the tangents to be weird. The actual like pandemic survival story was not complete. It was more about this like one young girl reliving her breakup and like her experience with her family and working in like a big corporate job. It just felt super random, disconnected. The flow of the story didn't make sense. Again, found myself not caring about her at all as the main character. Nothing about the plot or the characters were compelling and I really did not like this one. And then finally in this category, Little Labors by Rivka Galchen. I found this one in a little free library. This is like a collection of short story, essay, stream of consciousness stream of thought really my first book of that kind i think i'm still glad i read it because i realized these kind of books don't work for me but it was just too strange and too weird and really kind of about nothing i just i didn't understand i felt very stupid reading it like am i missing something i'm not understanding what i'm reading here i don't want to put myself through that again so i think i will just stay away from like literary short story short essays ramblings on life because they don't make sense to me. And finally, four books left to talk about in my sci-fi fantasy category. The first one is The History of Bees by Maya Bunde. This book I read for my first bee vlog, bee-themed vlog video. I collect books with bees on the cover or in the title, and this was one of them. This book had three different timelines, a past, a present, and a future, and all having to do with bees at some point. It was just really weird and kind of strange, and I didn't really connect with it. So you can hear much more of my detailed thoughts in my reading vlog. I just kept this one for my collection, but it was not a good one. The next sci-fi that just didn't really connect with me was Before the Coffee Gets Cold. This one's also pretty beloved, I guess, and I just found it to be a little weird and a little strange. It's a book about time travel set in Tokyo and these people go back in time and like relive something in their life. They're also sort of like disjointed short stories in a sense. So I was just like, eh, it's fine. It's fine, it wasn't bad, it was just fine. Now, my next two, I'm sorry. I've mentioned them before, so you probably, you probably know what's coming, but the first one is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Ugh, I just, I don't get it. I don't get the hype. I know I'm not the only one, at least I'm not the only one. I know there's people who really don't like it and there's people who absolutely love it. I found it so boring. It felt so long too. But I think what I realized about this book, especially also after reading Cersei, I do not like a book where the main character lives forever or is immortal because then what's the point? All the stuff that they go through, it doesn't matter if they can't die, if they can't really impact anything and they're just there forever living. It makes the reading experience feel like such a slog because usually the book spans many, many, many years, which in Addie LaRue is like hundreds of years. And so that's what I realized. It's a trope or theme or whatever that I don't like in books. The main kind of point of this book is about a girl who develops a relationship with the devil, basically ends up falling in love with him. And I'm like, no, I don't want to read about that like that's weird and then the last book in this very long list of books that i did not enjoy in 2021 is ready player one i think this is the book that i hated the most i gave this two stars but in hindsight i would give this zero stars i think out of all the other ones that i mentioned today some were fine 
some I just didn't like, but this one I actually despised. It was one of the first books I read in 2021 in January, and I think as I mentioned in my wrap up, the reason why I did not like this book is because it is just 80s word vomit. It's just 80s trivia and facts and video game trivia, movie trivia, and this teenager just like diving into the world of 80s. I'm not a child of the 80s, but I feel like even if I was, I wouldn't care. It felt unrealistic and kind of silly and this kid just playing a video game. So yeah, this one was just a big old flop for me and I and I actually hated it. Those are all the books that I have spicy takes on and just really <laughs> didn't enjoy. And I'm sorry if any of them are your absolute favorites or books that you loved. For some reason, I just didn't have a good experience with it and I'm sorry. And it ultimately just goes down to the feelings that I get when I'm reading it or my urgency to want to keep reading it or to want to stop reading it. Those are kind of the things that impact my experience and that's it. That's what you get, and I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for tuning in. Again, if you have any questions for me, I will do a 1K Q&A. Please leave those down below, and I will see you guys in another video soon. Bye.